everybody and welcome back. We're in the kitchen with Sue, the author of this lovely Yemenite book, Bone Soup and Flipped Bread. Um, we're making one of the recipes that are in this book. We're making what's called village kubana. Mm -hmm. Kubana is one of the best known breads of the Yemenites. It's made usually, but not always, for Shabbat. It cooks all night long, and when I first heard about it, I didn't believe that it wouldn't come out scorched, but it doesn't, it's delicious. And in this case, uh, we're going to in put into the dough some eggs that have been rubbed with oil, and they will bake overnight. The whole thing will bake overnight, and when you wake up in the morning, this marvelous aroma of sure, uh, we'll the kubana is called the jewel in the crown of Yemenite breads. It can be made in many different sizes. You can make it in a cookie can, mm -hmm. a candy can. You can make small ones, huge ones, and we're going to make a medium-sized one today. So, what are the ingredients? We have here four cups of flour, a okay. tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons of sugar, and a tablespoon of nigella, mm -hmm. the ketzach, the love Black and the mist. Seeds that we've used. Right, and we're going to mix that all together. Could you mash up this 30 grams of yeast? Sure. It's completely dissolved, and then you can pour it into this little well that I've made in the middle. I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of vegetable oil. And as I said before, the flour absorbs water at different rates. So even though the recipe calls for two cups, I'm only going to put in a little over one cup. See how that goes. To get a nice dough that's just a little tacky, just sticks a little bit to the fingers. The recipe calls for six eggs, but these are very small, so I put in seven. Because these breads were developed in hot desert climate, they developed in a way that would allow the yeast to rise without overrising or get the bread getting sour. So they need in the bowl, they slide a hand under, pick up some, pull it up to a ribbon, flip it down, pull it up, flip it down, and they do this for five or six minutes, the dough will become almost not tacky mm -hmm. as it absorbs the flour. Then, as the Yemenite woman who taught me this recipe told me, you let it, you cover it with a plate, go away and sweep the porch for 15 minutes. Come back, give it a little knead, cover it with the plate, go make your bed. You do this three times. And then you let it rise, a full rise, an hour, an hour and a half, until it doubles in bulk, in the bowl, covered with its plate. Ooh! You can bring it over here. This is our dough after it rose. I punched it down nicely. Now I'm going to melt 100 grams of butter on the stove. All right, we're going to prepare our kubana pan by brushing it with oil or melted clarified butter. Give it a good brushing. That'll prevent it from sticking while it bakes all night long. And we're also going to brush a piece of baking paper with the same oil, cut out about an inch bigger than the uh, size of the lid. Put it in the lid so that the oiled side will touch the dough. Now our butter should be melted. You pour the butter into the bowl. All right, we've melted our butter and let it cool a little bit. And with wet hands, we wet our hands and we're going to take half the Cubana dough and plop it right into the butter. Roll it around. And now, if you can hand me the Cubana pot. This one? Yeah, I'm gonna put it 
right into the pot. And I'm gonna press it out to fill the sides. These are two different loaves of bread? No, what we're doing is making a sandwich with the eggs in between. Oh, that's nice. So we're going to put the eggs around the edge. These are small eggs, so I've put in seven instead of the usual six. Each person will get an egg, and somebody for sure will want an extra one. I already love this dish. Bread and eggs. There we go. And now we're going to top it with the other piece of kubana dough. Okay, watch your hand. Now I put the other piece on top, and I push it down really well onto the sides of the two. <clears throat> the bottom piece and the top piece will join together make sure of you dough. Don't, make sure you don't crack those eggs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the eggs will turn uh, brown. The, as Brownish they cook, color. they'll turn brown, they'll get hard boiled. And in the best case, there'll be a little tiny center that's um, soft. Now I'm going to pour the remaining butter over. It'll just keep it from getting dried out. Give it a nice crispiness. And lay my piece of baking parchment over. Put the cover on. So now the lid is covering the bread. How long does it have to go in the oven for? I'm gonna put it in the oven. It'll be 100 or 110 degrees Celsius. 2 or 210 Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. It can bake up to 15 hours. Wow. Or it could go on a Shabbos plata as well. It could bake on a Shabbos plata. And uh, it'll be ready for breakfast. So that's why Shabbat it's on, morning. So that's why it's kind of a low heat. Very low heat, just a little below boiling. Mm -hmm. Wow, I cannot wait to try this. I think so. I'll have to sleep over and wait for some little mornings. <laughs> In it goes. Bread. Here's our kubana just out of the oven. I'm going to take off the lid. Ooh, this looks We're like a cake. We're going to take our bread board. Flip it over. Lift it out. Let's see what's under there. And there Voila. is our kubana. Yummy. Now you're going to want to serve this either with our fish dish or we'll grate some tomatoes with a little grated garlic and olive oil and salt and pepper. It makes a wonderful dip. Turn it over a little bit and we'll see the egg. Ooh. There we go. There she is hiding. So do I eat this with my hands? You eat it with your hands. You break off pieces and mm. typically you would have um, either hilba the fenugreek jelly, or you'd have grated tomato that has in it grated uh, garlic and uh, salt, pepper, and olive oil, or just plain grated tomato. Um, or just have it with a soup to soak up. Pretty much anything. Anything, it goes with everything. This is amazing. Bread, butter, and eggs. Right. What's <laughs> what better could, than that what on could Saturday be morning? Right. <laughs> So the book uh, was published by Geffen and it just came out. It, I believe, is available on Amazon. It will be in the States in May. It's on the boat now, wow. going to the States. So good luck with that. Thank you. Um, Thank I you am definitely, I'm definitely going to make these dishes when I get home and everyone watching should do the same. Thank you very much. I learned a lot about the Yemenite culture. Thank you so much. Oh, it was a pleasure. I we was scared, but We'd love really to have great. you again on the show. Really great. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, Sue, what is the first step? The first step is to prepare the vegetables, which we're going to saute very, very briefly. Okay. Uh, you can do them in this um, special chopper. Mm -hmm. Or what we have is a cup of parsley. Why don't you do the parsley and the chopper? Okay. And I'll do the coriander on the board. There's two cups of coriander.
Now we've got two onions that we're going to slice quite thin. Lee. Such a loud noise. Oh, it's perfect. Good. Oh, onions are terrible, and I forgot my secret weapon, which <laughs> is my astronaut goggles. Oh my god. That totally protect you from the onions. <laughs> but wow, stupid. it looks great on you and it even matches your apron. You're right. Apron. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> the onions go into three tablespoons of hot oil. And I'll saute them just until they're translucent. What about the tomatoes? Yes, we're going to do those. You want to do the yeah. tomatoes? Thickly sliced. Thick? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's just <laughs> flying. Flew in my hair. Green onion flying in my hair. Flying onion. Yemenites might use, if they have on hand, instead of uh, spring onions, they might use garlic chives because they grow garlic and use the chives. Now we're gonna put all our vegetables except the tomatoes, that is the parsley and the coriander, a quarter of a cup of water, and a tablespoon, a heaping tablespoon of Hawaii. That's the Yemenite spice powder. Give it a good stir. Cover it and let it cook for three minutes. Here we go. You can see the fish underneath there. This would be good with rice or potatoes. Dig in. Mmm, it's very juicy. It's delicious. Absolutely amazing. Good. It's amazing. When do the Yemenites eat this dish? Well, they'd eat it any time you or I would eat it, really, for a, a nice luncheon, a, a Shabbat, uh, an evening meal with the family. It's more of a party dish because they eat a lot of um, lentils and legumes as, as in everyday dishes, grains and so on. So the fish is more of a luxury. Well, there you have it. This is the Yemenite baked fish. It was great, amazing with all the different spices, the hawaiage. Great. See ya. We are here in Natalie Gleitman's kitchen of Natalie's Cuisine, where she is going to be teaching us how to make zos. Now, I have no clue what that is, so tell us, Natalie. Yeah, so we're gonna make zot, which is the latest food trend. Okay. So basically, zot stands for zucchini and oats. So it's a breakfast overnight dish, okay. which is made out of tons of superfoods, and the idea is to add some more vitamins to your breakfast to really power start the day. So some people might be really skeptical yeah, about Yeah, the zucchini it. and the oats, how does that work? How does that yeah, taste? Yeah, so zucchini on its own really doesn't have a strong taste. Like right. it's very neutral unless you put seasoning. So what it does, it just gives your breakfast more texture. It's gonna be kind of a beige muesli pudding kind of style. Okay. And it just adds so much vitamins. So you're gonna start the day with already your portion of fruit and your portion of veggies. So it's kind of the perfect way to start the day, right? Yeah. So let's and start I love with zucchini, it. So. <laughs> let's do it. so we have oats here. We're just gonna add a teaspoon of chia seeds, which is gonna give it like the puddingy texture. And then we're just gonna add some coconut milk, about like 200 milliliters. Perfect. Then we're just gonna stir through it a little bit. Okay. And now either soak it overnight, which is the ideal case because this way just 
kind of mix it up before going to bed and in the morning you just have to shred in the fruit and the veggie and then you're done. Okay. So that's kind of perfect. But if you have the weekend and you still want to do it, at least give it an hour, 40 minutes, an hour in the fridge so really everything soaks up. And ta-da! Ta-da! So I already kind of pre-soaked one overnight. Right. You can see that it has like a very firm texture now. So the only thing we need to do now is add some zucchini, apple, vanilla and top it off with your favorite toppings. For me that's like dried cranberries and some hemp seeds. Okay. So this is really the latest recipe on my blog. I just put it up last week so it's super new and it tastes delicious. It's completely gluten free, histamine free and lactose free. So As really per usual. Allergy friendly food here <laughs> and it's such a go-to breakfast recipe if you want to have something ready in the morning. Right. So let's start with it. We are adding some vanilla powder. This is like optional, not everybody likes it, but I love vanilla too. So let's kind of just steer it in. You see that it has this kind of very firm pudding film also. So now it's time to shred the zucchini and the apple. So we're just gonna put everything in here for now and then you kind of can put as much as you want. I usually use like half a zucchini okay. and one apple, but depending on the size of your apple, you don't have to go crazy. It's kind of up to you how right. much you want to put in. And, but for this one, I think we're gonna use at least like half of the zucchini and at least like half of the apple. Okay. So let's see where it takes us. <laughs> So now you can go ahead and mix in the apple and the zucchini. So let's see how much we want. The zucchini doesn't seem in place, but I'm very interested to see how this tastes. You will love it. Yeah. Okay, you can start stirring it in. Okay. So now we're going to top it up with our favorite toppings. My personal favorites are just some dried cranberries. Okay. And some hemp seeds, which are so great. Yeah? Yes. You can, top, you can put hemp seeds everywhere, on salads and everything. You have so much protein, so healthy. And if it's not sweet enough for you, also you can add some agave, you can add some date syrup, you can add some honey. Okay. It's really like, go crazy with it. Yeah, because it's already creative. super healthy. Yes, exactly. And now yes. I'm really curious to see what you think. <laughs> okay. Let's see what zucchini tastes like with oats. Cranberries really add flavor to it. You need it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you need more sweetness. sweetness, exactly. Just add like honey, just add mm -hmm. coconut sugar, like whatever your heart desires. It's totally up to you. I love this. This is a perfect breakfast. I'm gonna go finish it. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>
So how we're gonna start is we're gonna cut this zucchini and this pepper into kind of small pieces and then we're gonna go to the stuff, mix it up with some nice couscous and then fill the pumpkin with it. Yeah, let's do it. So what's great also about this dish is that you can basically fill it with whatever you want. Like I love to use zucchini, I love pepper, you can use um, uh, broccoli, like whatever your heart desires. There's no wrong way to do this, which is so great because you don't have to be a chef to do my recipes. You can just be a normal person that never cooks. Even you think it's easy. So it's really very accessible, you know? Small pieces, right? Yeah, small pieces. Because then we can fill a lot into the pumpkin. So you're gonna see the recipe is gonna be shown by the end of the show, yeah. or you can just pop by nataliescuisine.com to find lots of more recipes. Yes. And if you really love my recipes, you can also pre-order my book now on Amazon. It's called Happy Healthy Food. Check it out. Do it. So let's get to the stuff and cook it up. So first we're gonna sweat the vegetables. Meaning we don't need to use any oil, just keep the temperature like low to medium just to start sweating it. It's gonna give like the vegetables a really nice flavor later on. You're gonna see soon that it's gonna start smelling really delicious. Just so they're a little softer. Exactly. And it's kind of roasting them so it adds so much flavor right. to it. And you don't need to use any oil for this. So now we're gonna pour in some vegetable broth and some couscous and it's going to simmer for about six to eight minutes until the couscous is soft and until then also our zucchini and our peppers will be perfect and we can fill the pumpkin with it. Yum! Come look how delicious this looks. Our pumpkin is perfect! Wow! Wow! Mm. Wow! wow. This smells great, right? So delicious. So let's stuff the pumpkin. It's hot. Oops. Super hot. Okay. And then we have our delicious couscous mixture. So you have like several options here. So you could put the pump, put the stuffing, add some like feta cheese, and then put it back into the oven just to roast it for like two or three minutes to melt the cheese. That's like an option if people like that. If you want to stick to the vegan option, then just leave it wow, wow. with the so vegetables good. making a mess here, but <laughs> that's the fun part. There we go. And then I love to top it off just with some pomegranate. Yum. Ready to try it? Of course. <laughs> I've actually never had pumpkin before. So this what? Be, yeah. Wow. I you, can't believe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Never. Pumpkin is the best vegetable. It's so low calorie and it's so nourishing and delicious. It's incredible. Is this the perfect dinner? Oh, what? wow. This is so easy. To wow. Make. This is really, really good. This is definitely going to be a meal I make for a Shabbat dinner. Exactly. It, yeah, really. Like, it's so amazing to make for a large group of people for your family in the evening right. because it's so quick. You don't have to spend so and much time. And look how colorful kitchen. it is. Look how beautiful it is. It's fun this to looks. look at and fun to eat. Like, Definitely. It's, it's a great recipe. I'm going to go Try finish it. this out on my own. Check out Natalie's Cuisine blog and Instagram. Thank you. Mwah. Bye. Bye. Bye.